Hi everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. So my name is Venetia. I am from Belgium originally, but I live in Scotland with my partner. I moved here uh, over seven years ago uh, for uni and then I decided to stay because Scotland is a lovely country. I started knitting I think in 2018 or something like that um, and I've, I've really loved it since. Uh, I do a bit of crochet as well. I think I started crocheting first, but then knitting quickly overtook. So I decided to do a knitting podcast because uh, I've really been taking this hobby a bit more seriously in the last year. And what I really want to do is to document this journey and kind of have a, a, a video diary to look back at in the later years. Maybe see the progress I've made, the, st the styles, the trends, see what has changed. Um, I do keep a very informed Ravelry page, but I just thought that this would be another format that I, I could enjoy. And then also I'd like to connect with more people in the knitting community because I don't have many knitting friends in real life. So that's the introduction. Uh, I just hope that everything is okay, sound, lighting wise. I keep a very detailed description box. So anything that I've mentioned or that I will mention, I will put the details below. So definitely check that out if you're curious or want to double check anything. And I've also made some notes about what I want to talk about. So I will follow a pretty much usual format where I will talk about what I'm wearing first and then I will talk about my finished objects. For this first episode, I've chosen to speak about maybe the last couple of things that I've made last month and then I will talk about my works in progress and some acquisitions. So yeah, if that's interesting to you, then keep watching. Uh, so the first thing that I will talk about is what I'm wearing and if you don't recognize this flagship stripe, this is the Sycamore Sweater by Petite Knit. So uh, as you can see, it's got, I think, three stripes. Yes, this first one goes out into a point and the other ones are just striped all over. So this is me wearing it right here in this light, but I'm going to insert some B-roll of it laying flat and of me wearing it. And my boyfriend took some very nice photos of me on a really nice day a couple of weeks ago. So I will insert some photos of that as well. So I will talk about the pattern first and then the yarn I used and then uh, if I've been wearing it and any problems while making it. So the pattern is by Petite Knit. It was released, I think this summer and it was in collaboration with Isiger. I'm really sorry for butchering uh, the names, uh, warning. So Isiger collection, I think it was a Botanica collection magazine. So uh, it's a lovely sweater. The construction is kind of the beginning of a, a saddle shoulder, as you can see here, and then it goes into a raglan. So um, you start with that. Uh, in the round, I think, and I think there's some short rows, and then you go down, and then the stripes are made with Japanese short rows, and I really like short rows, uh, I think they're really fun, and they make the knitting go quite fast. This pattern has, I think, 17 pages, it is quite a big, hefty piece of work, but um, I really enjoyed it, I think it went really fast, and it, it was very Moorish, you just wanted to keep going to reach the next stripe, so then you, you keep doing the short rows to make the stripes uh, and then you pick up the sleeves and knit the sleeves and the sleeves, uh, as you can see, are different widths, the stripes, and they're here to match this aspect, which as you can see, oh, how perfect is that match? They match the thickness and the width of the stripes on the side. And then you pick up the neck and you do a rolled neck. So this is quite a nice, comfortable, <laughs> rolled neck. I think I'm I'm pretty happy. I'm really happy with the length I did mine at. It doesn't come too high, um, it doesn't come too low. Um, I think sometimes, depending on what I'm wearing underneath, I'm wearing a t-shirt here, you can kind of maybe see the neck if it comes too high, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, the pattern I would say was, was quite difficult. There were a couple of points where I was a little bit stuck. I had to undo and frog at some point for one of the stripes, but that was my mistake. And um, in the video that Kimi does to demonstrate some techniques, she showed three different types of uh, working sh the short rows. And you only really need two of them. The third one that she demonstrated 
was just used literally once in the entire pattern and that confused me. I was always just wondering where is this method gonna come back, but I didn't, but that's fine. And I also noticed at some point there was a typo in the pattern in English because it told you to keep working the sleeves for a certain amount of inches or centimeters and the conversion wasn't right. Uh, but then I emailed and then she told me what the correct one was, so that was fine. Um, so I'll just look at my Ravelry page just here to see if there's anything else. So I've made the size small, the second size, and I've made it using 4.5 millimeter for the ribbing and 5 for the main body. I used the same needle size for um, flat and round and the main color and the contrasting color. So the 5 millimeters, so it went really fast. <clears throat> um, it took me, actually, it took me three weeks to make, but I was working on other things at the same time. And I th think three weeks is pretty much my average for a sweater, mm, if I'm working on other things at the same time, which I usually am. I am not a monogamous knitter, as you will see in um, the later part of this video. So I'll show you the swatch that I've made. So this was my first time using um, Jensen. So it's made with Isiger's all of them are from Isiger. So there's Jensen, which is the main color, and then Silk Mohair, and then for the middle stripe it's Isiger Spinny, and that's also held with a strand of mohair. So overall I had one, two, three, four, five, six yarns. Um, so there are uh, those three colors for the stripe with that navy blue. And then there's the Jensen and the Silk Mohair. And I'll put all the colors in the description because there's a few. And the inspiration for the color was 100% stolen from uh, Maria Vertsen on Instagram. I saw her version of it while I was looking at the hashtag to pick my color palette. And I absolutely adored her color, her version. I think gray is a really nice color on me. And when I look at my wardrobe, gray is pretty much all I buy usually. And I also like navy and blues. So grey and blue is the way to go. Uh, I think Florence from uh, Handmade by Florence is also making one with different yarns, but a, a very similar color palette. So I'm looking forward to seeing her version of it. So I'll insert some flat lays and some b-roll of the yarn if I haven't already. Um, and yeah, so the yarn, I was happy to see the marled effect of those three spinny yarns. If I had to decide, if I had to pick those colors myself, I don't think that I could have. I think it's incredible the color variations that people are coming up with. I do not have the creativity for that. I like to just pick something that I like and uh, do the same thing for me because I can't imagine in my head what they will look like together. And Jensen was really nice to use. I think what's really important with those sweaters is the mohair because that's what your skin is going to be touching, I guess, and that's the thing that people are sensitive about. Um, and I would say that Isiger is quite soft. It's a tiny bit itchy here on the neck, but it's barely noticeable. And today I'm wearing a t-shirt and I am noticing it on the sleeves, but usually when I'm wearing a long sleeve top underneath, then I can't feel it at all. It doesn't matter. And I would say that I'm pretty sensitive to mohair in the sense that I cannot tolerate drops, kit silk, unfortunately, because for my wallet that would be a pretty welcome um, contribution. But no, I cannot wear kit silk. So Isiger soft silk mohair is definitely uh, one that I can tolerate. So I'm kind of on a journey to try different types of mohair. I think a lot of us are when we first discover mohair. So I've been trying to test out different brands and Isiger is definitely one that I am keeping on the yes list. Um, the only problem that I ran into with this pattern basically is that um, Petit Knit tells you that for most small sizes um, you only need one ball of the contrasting color mohair. Uh, but as I was doing, I think, the second sleeve, I think when I was doing the second sleeve, I ran out of the mohair and I was really bummed out. And I considered taking apart my swatch, but I thought that wouldn't be enough and it surely wouldn't have been. So I was really annoyed because I don't like waste and I don't like having leftovers. I always try to, I'm very bad for not buying an extra 
it's kind of yarn I just always go on the safe side and I just think if I'm gonna crop things anyway it doesn't matter but then it does matter and I run out of yarn <clears throat> So I popped in a yarn shop in Edinburgh, Be Inspired Fibers. I love that yarn shop, it's amazing. I'll put the link below for things that I mentioned. And I picked up a ball of that colour, a second ball. And I just dipped into it for a couple of grams just to finish then all of that. And then that means I have basically like an almost unused ball of this, which I was wondering what to do with. And I wanted to maybe just like, use, use it right away while I still was into that color I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do with the leftover spinny I, I really don't know maybe use it for some swatches because I know that uh, some patterns that are popular right now are using it so it could be good to test out the tension and the gauge with that and then for Jensen I don't think this is gonna be enough for anything um, but maybe if I bought a second ball to go with it then I could maybe make um, a hat or something. Uh, all the details will be on Ravelry about the ways that the weights of the yarn I used and have left, if you're curious about that. But um, yeah, I really like this sweater. I'm really happy with the fit. The fit is really great and I've been wearing it a few times. I wear it inside the house, it's really warm and uh, I've worn it out once, but I really don't go out that much, so the, that doesn't mean that I don't like it. So yeah, out of all the sweaters I've made, I've definitely worn this one a lot and I really like the shoulder construction so I'm definitely going to be looking at other patterns that have this saddle shoulder construction, I really liked it. So the second item that I finished is another petite knit pattern and it's the Stockholm sweater, no, the Stockholm slipover. So this is it. It looks very similar, it's grey as well. It's um, by um, Petit Knit, it's a really simple, really basic pattern. It's a little creased because um, we've moved recently, so that was packed away. Um, so as you can see, grey is definitely going to be a common theme in my knits. That's the swatch that I've made for that. And the yarn that I've used is Send This Garn Sunday, the Petit Knit version, and it's in foggy grey. Uh, it's this yarn, Petit Knit Foggy Grey Sunday, um, so 1031, and then I used Tin Silk Mohair for the mohair, and that is in the color 1022, uh, and I'll also insert some b-roll of the yarn and the sweater, so I'll try and do that now as I'm speaking. I'm really trying to figure out how to do this podcast thing and when to insert b-roll. I've taken quite a lot, but I don't know if you're going to see all of it. So the way that you build this slipover is that you start at the back, you do quite a big portion of the back, and then you pick up for the left shoulder, pick up for the right shoulder, you do the two things at the front, and then you finally join in the round, uh, and you do also increases for the armholes, which is why it got that nice curve, then you do the body in the round, and then you pick up for the neck, pick up for the arms, and then that's it. It was really fast. It took me eight days, and that was a project that I was doing when I was on the move. I had to take the train a few times, quite a lot last year, so that was my kind of, yeah, on the move project. I'm quite happy with it. It's really comfortable. Tinsel mohair is also a mohair that I can tolerate, so I'm really happy that it, it feels nice and soft and that I wear it on top of shirts. Even if the shirt is thin, I feel like the mohair doesn't stab me, as it can feel like sometimes. The construction is really, really simple. This is one of Petite Knit's earlier patterns, I think, and she doesn't hold your hand. As some people might know from Petite Knit's patterns, they're they don't really go into too much detail about anything and there's some videos to help but sometimes they're in a different, well they're usually in a different language and sometimes they don't have subtitles. The only difficult part here was uh, picking up for the shoulder. There's a bit of a technique involved where you basically use your circular needle and you push it to use the other side of the needle, if you know, you know. And that was my first time doing that technique, but I'm so glad that I didn't learn it because now in other sleepover patterns, if that comes up, 
I know what they're talking about and I can always use that video as a reference. The good thing about this pattern actually is that even though it recommended three balls of each yarn, so the mohair and the fingering weight, I only used basically two of each. I think I had to dip a tiny little bit into the mohair, but if I had made it, you know, like a couple rows shorter, then I wouldn't have needed that third ball. So that means that I could just whip out another couple of these in different colors with just two balls of each. That's amazing. That is really cheap because that yarn is, I would say, on the medium end of the spectrum in terms of, of how expensive and affordable it is. So two balls of fingering, two balls of mohair, and I can get a few more of those, which I'm, I think I'm definitely going to do because a sleepover, I think, is the perfect palette cleanser. I think some people like to make hats or socks. Um, I don't like making socks as a palette cleanser because I just am not liking doing the second sock and then it becomes more of a chore than a, a palette cleanser and I don't wear that many hats in the end. So a sleepover, I can do one in a week and they're so wearable and versatile. I've been wearing them over shirts, but I can't wait for spring where I'm gonna start wearing them over dresses. I think that's gonna be super cute. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about this slipover. I definitely liked the grey. I think I used the colours that Petit Knit recommends just because I didn't want to have to think about it. And I like it. I think I thought it was going to come a bit darker and I think I was a bit annoyed that it came to almost the exact same colour as this. But that's fine. And like I said, I'm definitely going to be making more of those in the future. I didn't have any problems while making this. I just... It was a smooth ride. I think I picked up a tiny bit less stitches at the arms than she recommends, but it really doesn't matter. And I've bound off fairly tightly like they recommend, just to make sure that it doesn't kind of gape. So yeah, overall, I really, really loved that pattern. It was really easy. It didn't take much yarn. And it's so beautiful and so polished and professional. And it really made me want to do more slipovers. I've got a really big Ravelry queue of all the slipovers I want to make. There's there's a few from Petit Knit, a few from My Favorite Things Knitwear, um, the Knit Pearl Girl, Sophie, and there's some that I will talk about later. So yeah, there's definitely a lot more vests I can see in the future. So those are the two finished objects that I made. I made, I think I finished both of them in November. I didn't finish anything in December yet, I haven't, because I was moving. I moved last week in this flat, so behind me are lots of boxes that I'm not going to show. So I was really busy with the move and it was busy with the job that I'm finished. I finished uh, my job just before the holidays for Christmas and I'm starting a new one in the new year, which is why we moved. Um, so yeah, December has not really been a knitting month. And I was sick as well. I got that nasty cold slash flu that's going around in the UK and it put me out of the rotation for a few days. Just didn't feel like knitting. So now I will move on to my uh, works in progress. I'm wondering how I'm doing for time. It's been 20 minutes so far. I think that's fine. I think this will be about an hour is what I'm aiming for, basically. So the works in progress. I always want to say works in project, but it's not that. So the works in progress are, um, there's three of them that I will show. The first one I started ages ago, before the move, and I thought I was going to finish, but I ran out of yarn. So I, I had yarn uh, in a different city, basically, so I had to wait to get to that city. But it's the vest number two by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Here's the little swatch sample that I've made. It's, as you can see, the light kind of goes through but on the skin, it's fine. And as you can see, it's also quite reminiscent of this blue color. And spoiler alert, it's made with mohair, um, the Isiger silk mohair, the navy color. So I'm using my leftovers for that. I had to buy a bit more actually, but that's fine. So Isiger mohair and the other yarn that I'm using is Isiger Alpaca 2, which is this gorgeous, this is quite blown out, but I'll show some B-roll this absolutely gorgeous navy blue. It's called Midnight, and it has those streaks of electric blue and purple running through it. It's also extremely soft. So Isiger Alpaca 2 is made of alpaca and also wool. Yeah, it's 50% wool, 50% alpaca, and it, it's just, it's amazing. And the combination of them two is just 
oh, it's heavenly. It's so soft and it's so slippery. So I'm using metal needles as I am for everything. And then it's just flying off the needles, both literally and metaphorically. And here is the beast. So this is what I have so far. You can obviously see the v-neck. This, I think, is my first v-neck vest. Um, so you've got the arms here, which they have increases. So it's the same kind of construction. You start with the back and then you pick up a shoulder, pick up the second shoulder, work the front, and then you're increasing for the v-neck and increasing for the armhole just at the end. Then you join in the round. And then you're supposed to work your way down from the round and then pick up stitches on the arms and pick up stitches for the v-neck. So I think the reason that this has been on hold for so long is because I got ahead of myself and I decided to slip the stitches on the edges to have neater edges for the, the, the armholes and the v-neck. Uh, I think I saw someone mentioning that, you know, on a random project and I just decided to take it on and use it on that project here without thinking. Because for those of you who don't know, when you slip your first stitch, um, what that does is that there are half as many stitches to pick up afterwards on that edge which then if the designer tells you to pick up 100 stitches for the armholes then you would only have 50 and you can't double dip I thought I could get away with going twice in the same stitch but it doesn't work uh, the yarn doesn't work that way so I think I've, I've been really putting off picking up this project because uh, I know it's going to be a pain to pick up the next stitches and pick up the arm stitches for the ribbing and it's also going to be on that very dark blue yarn and in the UK right now the sunlight goes out after an hour so I know I need to do it on a big bright sunny day in natural light and just power through it but I will do it and I'm sure this could be finished in less than a week I just have I'm going to use the same length as the Stockholm sleepover as a guide of when to stop because I, I really liked that length on me and then I'll just do the ribbing on, on everywhere. I was a bit nervous about the v-neck as well because that was my first time but now I've already started a v-neck sweater which I will talk about next and the v-neck picking up the stitches for that was fine so I know that it's okay. I don't mind picking up stitches on straight lines but I really get overwhelmed when I have to pick up stitches on those curved edges. I find that difficult. So this was my first time uh, using a pattern from my favorite things knitwear. I don't know if I've said that already, it's from her. And I really like them, they're really well written. It's the same kind of petite knit style where it doesn't go into too many detail. I think it goes into a tiny bit more details than petite knit does, but um, not in a way that throws me off. Um, it's a really clever, simple, timeless construction. I think it's also one that I could see myself do a lot more of in the future and I wouldn't slip the edges this time. So yeah, I like this yarn combination. I like this pattern. I'm excited to finish it. I really just need to get over myself and pick up those stitches to do the ribbing. It'll, it'll be a quick win. What I like to do usually when I make sweaters is I make the yoke and then I go down and then when I run out of yarn, instead of joining some, I usually do the arms or like start picking up the arms just to work on different body parts uh, depending on what the mood I'm in um, and that way when I finish the body of the sweater usually I've already finished or at least started the arms so it's less daunting and it feels closer to the end line and then I can also try them on and, and see like the shoulders and, and everything. Okay so the next work in progress it, it's a big one it's uh, a fingering weight sweater and I 100% got inspired by Rebecca from the Crea Bea. I will link her below if you don't know her already. She made a sweater using a yarn from Wee County Yarn which is called Kinross 4 Ply. It's 100% lamb's wool and she said that she touched a sample in a yarn shop in London and was shocked when she saw what yarn it came from and it just felt like cashmere basically and, and very luxurious and I got so curious watching her videos I was like surely it can't be that good what does it feel like what does it feel like and then when I went to buy that navy mohair in Be Inspired Fibers in Edinburgh they were stocking some of that yarn so I touched it 
and here it is now. So I've touched it and it doesn't feel anything special or particular. Uh, so I just was so looking forward to swatching with it. So I swatched with it and I washed it and oh my god, I get the hype. It's amazing. I think I was so obsessed with the swatch. Um, this is with 3.5 millimeter. I was so obsessed with it. I kept on putting it on my face. It feels amazing. It just made me want to power through the knitting part of the sweater. Usually I like the process and I like the finished object kind of equally, although I feel like I probably knit more for the act of knitting rather than the finished product. So I'm more of a process knitter. But for this, I was like, I don't even care about knitting. I just want a sweater made of this. I'm, I'm so obsessed. It's a gorgeous color. This is the colorway Granite, which Rebecca had mentioned. Uh, she did hers in Porridge, which is a gorgeous natural white, kind of um, beige, you know, warm white. Uh, and this is Granite, which is great. It's a nice neutral. They've got an amazing color selection. I've already selected five colorways that I want to make fingering weight sweaters in because honestly, honestly, this is a big endorsement. Please, please go and get your hands on this. It's amazing. So... I thought it would take me a while to make a sweater, so I decided to start one ASAP. So I started one a couple of weeks ago. No, a week ago. I started it when I moved here. And yeah, I've really whizzed through it. So I've made the yoke and part of the body. And I've almost finished the sleeve. And I've picked up the v-neck stitches and knitted them up. So this is what we've got so far. It's quite a lot. And yeah, just picked up the second sleeve as well. So as you can see, I'm, I'm staying true to myself and I am doing the sleeves even though the body isn't finished. So the body actually says to knit for a certain amount of inches uh, and everyone on the Ravelry notes decided to make it longer. So I'm also gonna do that. The Ravelry notes also say to not do the short rows at the back. And I wish I followed that recommendation because as I've learned, you don't really need short rows at the back of the neck when you have a v-neck because it won't come back in your front, actually, the same way that a crew neck would if you didn't do short rows. So, yeah, it, it just gives a bit of extra fabric here at the back, which I don't like. You'll see in the flat lay b-roll I insert, it just doesn't lay flat, which is very frustrating. But the biggest issue I've had with this pattern was the v-neck and the ribbing. So I picked up the stitches. To be fair, I picked up less stitches than what the pattern indicated. And that's because it didn't give a ratio. It just said, pick up the stitches at the back of the neck, pick up stitches on the sides of the V and pick up one center stitch. And it, I just, I think I picked up two for every three on the V neck sides. And that was not enough, but I didn't want to redo it. So I picked them up started ribbing, I decided to do twisted rib, I think it looks quite nice, but now in retrospect I probably would have just preferred doing it normally because it made it harder to fix mistakes and also for the Italian bind off, sorry, for the Italian bind off it's a bit harder because I think you have to untwist them before binding off. So I did it the amount of ribbing that was required and then I bound off and lots of people recommended to bind off basically very tightly because then it would not make it flare up so I did that bound off very tightly in the Italian bind off and wouldn't you know it I tried it on and it wouldn't fit over my head and I was devastated I was so sad I was so excited to finally see that v-neck it's the flagship you know it's 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 supposed to be what the pattern is all about, is that v-neck, and I couldn't put it on. So I was so sad. And I had never picked away at an Italian bind off before, so I didn't even know, like, where do I go from there? Do I cut? Do I use a needle and kind of unpick it? So what I did was I tried to put kind of a afterthought lifeline in the stitches, kind of just below the um, bind off. And then I cut and then just picked away at all the yarn. I, I cut so many times, kind of all around the neck, picked away at it. I didn't do a really good job with my afterthought lifeline, so 
uh, lots of them had dropped. So it, it was honestly a nightmare. I did not have a good time. I was getting so frustrated and I was really scared and I didn't know what else to do or what to do differently because any other bind off I can think of were going to be less stretchy than the Italian bind off. So I just thought I would do the Italian bind off again, but this time loosely. But I just didn't know. It made me overthink my Italian bind off because every other time that I've used the Italian bind off for sleeves and hems, I've always been, honestly, I don't want to toot my own horn, but like on point. You know, it doesn't feel too tight, it doesn't feel too loose, it just, it's very straight, and that's always what I've been able to achieve. Uh, I think it's Italian bind off for this as well, yeah, like everything is just nice and stretchy and it doesn't flare, and here I was trying to make it looser but not too loose, and as you can see in the flat lay, I think I've made it too loose, but the good news is that now it does fit over my head. So as you can see, it, it flares. So. I'm not gonna redo it, there's no way. This was way too hard. As you can see, there's something running in it here and it's just a bit of spare yarn. Um, and if I tighten it, if I pull on that, it bring, it cinches it in, which is pretty. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy some elastic thread and do that trick where you run the elastic thread through your neckline afterwards to bring it flatter against your skin. So I'm gonna do that or blocking might be enough. So the sweater itself hasn't been blocked yet. This feels, I'd still wear that. It still feels really nice. It's just a little bit rougher, but I, I'm gonna obviously wash it to get that amazing uh, softening and blooming that this yarn is known to do. And yeah, I've got my eyes on a few more colorways. I think Highland Cow, which is an orange. I've not made anything orange or rusty before, so I'm definitely gonna do that. Then there's a nice blue that I want to do as well. So I've got a few ideas for what patterns I want to do. So there's a cozy raglan, cozy classic light by Jessie Made, and it's really pretty. And then there's a few fingering weight sweaters that I've spotted on Ravelry, which I've queued up. I think you can see my queue if you add me as a friend or if you follow me on Ravelry, if you're curious about what my plans are. So yeah, I was so into this project when I started, I I was going so fast. I really thought, can I actually finish a fingering weight sweater in two weeks? Like, it's gonna be faster than my iron weight sweaters. And that's because I was loving it. And then I really didn't love the neckline. The sleeves are fine and they fit really nicely. They're not too tight and not too loose. I think it's gonna be a really nice fit. The pattern itself, it's from Paula Pereira for Pearl Soho, I don't think I've mentioned before, and it's a nice pattern. The way it's laid out is actually quite confusing because it kind of breaks all the sizes into different paragraphs. Usually when I read a pattern, the different sizes, like different numbers are into brackets just next to it, but here every size almost has its own um, section, but then some instructions are valid for all the sizes or some sizes, so you kind of have to pay attention and if you print it I'd recommend highlighting, but it's fine. Um, the only problem is that the instructions for the v-neck apparently were needlessly complicated and also were missing some information like the ratio of picking up the stitches and it feels like for a pattern which is a bit expensive, I was quite shocked actually, I think it's almost like ten dollars, like eight pounds, I didn't know why I was paying so much for a pattern and I know there's so much work going into making patterns but I just maybe I got used to those 650 7 pound patterns out there so I wondered what all the fuss was about and if anything the pattern is a bit more complex or more badly written than what I'm used to so that also left kind of a bad taste in my mouth but um, yeah, the problem with it is those short rows at the back, which are not useful and actually don't make it look flat. The instructions for the neck are complicated, but I'm using the same instructions as my uh, vest number two by My Favorite Things Knitwear because it also has a v-neck, so that's fine. And the other thing is, yeah, lots of people were unsatisfied with how cropped it was, so I just make I just made sure that. I would keep a note of that and make it longer. I think I'm gonna make it a good four inch longer, four inches longer. But I've put all those details in my Ravelry page and all the yarn and the weights. 
So I'm hoping to finish this, I guess, quite soon. I, I think I'll do the sleeves first, finish all of that, and then finish the body, and then block it, and I will come back to you probably, probably, I hope, I hope that's the next thing I'm wearing. That would be nice in episode two. But yeah, so kind of a love affair, love and hate relationship with that v-neck sweater, the daily pullover. Uh, and then my next and my last work in progress, it's actually a house finished object. So this next thing is my Christmas day cast on and it's a sock. So oh, it looks, oh, how great does that look? It's so fun. So this is the library socks by the kitchen sink shop. It's a free pattern, which is great. Um, <clears throat> and the yarn is obviously what's gorgeous here. And it's West Yorkshire Spinners, the kind of bird colorway collection. And this is the colorway blue tit. And the contrast heel, toe and cuff is butterscotch, also from West Yorkshire Spinners. So this is currently blocking. I, I blocked it yesterday and it's already pretty dry. I squeezed so much water out of it that I think it's, it's gonna dry out probably by the end of the day. And I've cast on its sibling. Uh, I've, really, I've just done four rows after the cuff. I've tried to match the stripes so that um, they would be similar or the same, ideally. So this is the yarn, as you can see. It's really pretty. And uh, the butterscotch color is matching that yellow. So that yarn was given to me by my boyfriend for Christmas um, with other things that I will talk about in yarn acquisitions. So um, I was really happy with that. I have a few of the bird collections already, but I didn't have blue tits, so I thought he did really well. And I cast it on, on the Christmas morning. And the interesting thing about that is that I spent the whole day casting on uh, and knitting down that sock. And I initially made it much longer on the leg, so I started from the top, going to the bottom, and I did the heel, and then I was doing the foot, and there were just a few problems. So uh, the cuff opening was too tight, and I had done twisted rib. I had done twisted two by two rib, and you know it just looked, it just looked way too stretched out to be pretty, and it felt tight on my leg. And because it was also too long and it came too high on my leg, then, you know, my leg gets thicker as you go higher. So it was uh, pulled apart even more. So I just didn't feel right. And then it was weird because I used a 2.25 millimeter needle and it's a 64 stitch sock. And I didn't know whether to size up or down because I would have maybe preferred the cuff to be looser, but then the body of the sock was quite loose because half of it is ribbing or kind of a rib stitch so it felt like I had a bit of extra room but anyway so I didn't like that and then I've also I also made a mistake with the heel I didn't read the instructions properly and what you're meant to be doing is you slip your first stitch purl wise and you purl all the way but I read it as slip one stitch purl wise purl one slip one stitch purl repeat on the wrong side of the heel so it was <clears throat> it was fine but I just knew that it was wrong and it's not exactly how it looked like in the photos oh yeah and then also when you're doing this beautiful self striping thing what you kind of want to do is avoid you know like y the yellow starting right there or ending here or starting here or ending here so some of it will just be luck some of it you can calculate I guess but in the first iteration, I miscalculated or was unlucky and there was going to be some yellow like right there and I didn't know how to deal with that so I just cut it off and I thought it would be fine because this would be then the yellow like sort of aspect. But then down the, the top of the foot, you were missing that yellow stripe and again, I knew it was going to bother me. I wanted it to be a continuous <clears throat> pattern. I was too unhappy and at the end of the day I realized I had just spent one day knitting this. So it did feel like a lot of work because that's what I was doing all day literally, but I could have just I could just undo it. So that's what I did. I undid it and then the next morning started all over again, this time making only the leg uh, for six stripes. I had 11 before. So this is six stripes 
made sure to make the heel uh, correctly. Uh, it's a um, you know slip stitch heel kind of, and then a heel flap and gusset. I think is what it's called. It's not a short roll heel or afterthought heel. I, it's my favorite heel construction. And then made sure that the striping thing was going to be okay at the top of the leg and continued. I also had another problem here at the toe where technically I think to reach the level that they talk about, I would have needed to continue a, a couple, uh, like a stripe or two more, but that would have been yellow. So I made it shorter and then did the toe. But in hindsight, that was a good idea because this, this, this grew in the wash a little bit too much, I think. Uh, this is the ex excess fabric. So I'm kind of worried, but I'm not gonna try it on because it's still kind of damp and I don't wanna put my foot in something wet. So, I don't know. If they are too large, they will just end up being slipper socks. It's completely fine. I'm really excited. I'm really glad I started over. Usually it's what happens when you wonder whether to frog or not. At this point, you should already realize that yes, you're better off frogging because you're gonna keep wondering and then you'll have worked more. So anyway, those are my works in progress. I think I'm gonna be finishing that sock. It took me two days to make that first one. So uh, of working continuously pretty much. So if I work continuously on the second one, then I should be finished tomorrow, which would be exciting. And yeah, they'll be my Christmas socks from my boyfriend. So I'm gonna move to acquisitions. So the other things that he gave me was the same yarn, but in the colorway Hollyberry, which Granted, that would have been a better colorway for the Christmas cast on, but I need some contrasting yarn for that. And I chose to go with Cherry Drop, which is one of the kind of reds that runs through it. I think it's it's this one. Not the orangey one, but the pinkish one. So I'm going to order that soon. And then the other yarn that he gave me is gorgeous. It's hand dyed yarn. <clears throat> And it's from this company called Dystopic Fiber. It's a hand dyer in Glasgow. And look at this. Oh, this is gorgeous. So Dystopic Fiber, this is the colorway Advanced Deceiver. And it actually goes really well with a colorway that I had bought myself from this hand dyer here, which is called Porcini Mushroom. Um, as you can see, They've got that same kind of brown splatter. It's it's amazing. I'm so excited. I think these are going to make a wonderful pair of sock. Or I could maybe buy a shade in the middle because he has a whole collection, uh, the dyer. Buy a shade in the middle and then make a fade sweater. But I don't know if I'm going to be wearing this purple. So I think socks would be great. Main body in the purple and then some of the contrast in this. And then I have more of that left over, which that could be an accessory because it's more wearable than the purple. I think is the plan for this. So I'm really excited about this yarn. I can't wait to do it. It's um, a four ply fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So yeah, pretty standard hand dyed sock yarn. So that was what I got for Christmas from my boyfriend, which is great. And then the acquisition I did before that, I bought some stuff um, just before the move and I will talk about that because uh, I will hopefully be casting them on soon. So I've bought more West Yorkshire spinners. Uh, this is the colorway Juniper and this is to go with some yarn that I already have which is the bird collection in the colorway Mallard. So I was uh, bought this to go with that because I'm going to make a pair of socks for my boyfriend and he wanted this as the contrast. The worst part is I already had some of the brown. I think this is called turmeric and I had that, but he said, no, he wants blue. So I had to buy yarn for the boyfriend. What a shame. So yeah, that was uh, nothing else to say about that. I'm just gonna make some vanilla socks, I think. And then the last thing of interest is I bought some Cascade 220 yarn. This is the non superwash one. I think they have both. Um, and this is because I want to make two projects. So this first one here is a colorway walnut heather. It's a nice cool brown, light brown. It's very pretty. 
Um, and I'm gonna make the Lana vest by Irene Lynn. It's a beautiful vest. I also have some yarn in an oatmeal color from like stash from a year ago, which I might use as well, but I think I'm gonna make this colorway first. So I thought a brown cabled vest is something that I've not seen that much and I don't have. And yeah, I think it'll be a very interesting pattern. I'm a bit worried because I'm not the biggest fan of cables. I definitely don't think I could do a cabled sweater. So a cabled vest I thought might be a really good way to dip my toes in the cable world. I've done cables before, I know how to do them, but I just don't enjoy them as much. I think it's too start and stoppy for my taste. But I've also bought those two colorways. So we've got natural white or just natural. And then, oh, one second. This is the colorway Fashion Island Heather and all the details will be below as I said. So it's kind of a, a black and white basically. <clears throat> and this is to make the Loom Loomy sweater by Sari Norland. I'm so excited about that. I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous iron weight uh, color work sweater, color work circular yoke. It, it's so nice. And I used her colors because again, I didn't want to have to think about it. I was thinking of maybe um, doing a colorway that Florence did from Handmade by Florence, where she used knitting for olive and she used a lower contrast combination where this color was like a lighter brown, pretty much kind of like that maybe, but like a bit darker. I thought that was gorgeous, but I thought that this was a bit more affordable and I don't know, I, I just think, yeah, I just picked this. So I bought one of these and I think four or five of these, but the details will be on my Ravelry page. So I've just worn them up into skines recently, so I think I'll make a little swatch. I think I'll try to do those circular swatches where you have to cut behind and you get like a little fringe at the end, just to make sure that my color work gauge is correct. And the last acquisition is a yarn swift, which you may have seen in my introduction. It's something that I have definitely needed for a long time. As I said, I've been knitting much more seriously in the last year, which means buying those fancy yarns from those, you know, fancy Isiger or uh, hand dyers. And the problem with that is that you need a second person or a lot of patience to wind them up into cakes. I love having cakes. But yeah, it's annoying to have to do it by hand. And I decided to make my life easier, so I got some money from my grandma for Christmas. I bought that Leaky, I think, Leak Yarn Swift. It's the Rosewood finish from Wool Warehouse. Just really nice, affordable. I think it's mid-range, where it's not the fanciest out there, but it's also not the most expensive, uh, or not the least expensive. And uh, I've used it a lot, I think, so far. I can't be bothered making too many of them uh, in one go, so I've just been trying to do like three balls of yarn a day or something. It's been really good. So yeah, I would recommend. I think it's the kind of purchase where you realize, oh, where was this all my life? Why did not did I not buy this sooner? So if you're looking for a sign to buy a yarn swift, I say do it. So I think that's it for the episode. It's been around 50 minutes, which I think is what I was aiming for. I have talked a lot, my uh, throat is all dry. I think I did okay for my first podcast, I hope so. Let me know if there's any suggestions or things that I've missed. I think I've been watching myself too much on my phone instead of the camera, so I'm sorry. Um, I think the lighting is okay. I think the B-roll is gonna be quite useful to show more of the details. I feel like it's difficult because I have so much to say about all of those projects but I don't know for how long to speak about them. Um, I personally like my podcast to be an hour long or even longer, I don't mind, but maybe editing Venetia in the future is gonna hate how long this video was. My computer definitely will not like it. Um, but I feel like in retrospect now, I'm thinking of all those things that I may have forgotten. So I may have to do some voiceover to talk about some details if I realize I forgot some things. But I'll, I'll work it out as we go. I'm sure there will be many more episodes. I have some plans for the future. I think I want to make a video about my um, kind of sleeping whips, things that I have not touched in ages. There's quite a few, to be honest, maybe like five or six projects that I think 
could get a little video. Uh, things I'm taking with me on the needles in 2023. And then another video that I really, really, really want to make is everything I've knit in 2022 because there's there's so much. I took it so seriously this year. I'm so proud. I've got the biggest, you know, sweater pile and accessories. Um, so I think I want to make that video. And then maybe a video about 2023 knitting goals because one of them, for example, will be that I want to knit a sweater for my boyfriend. So that would be exciting because I've never done a men's sweater before. So that's it for today. I've put my socials in the description below. I've put all the details in the description below. My Ravelry, where I'm, I'm really active and, and really on top of, of it, actually. Um, if you have any questions or things that you want to say, please, 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 like, comment and let's chat. Let's, let's talk about knitting. As you can tell, I have probably hours worth of things to talk about. So my camera cut out just the last 10 seconds, but I just wanted to say thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon for episode 2 of the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. Bye!